issues. So I know a lot of people have knee issues and as I'm sitting right now, a lot of people would have issues sitting like I am now or with positions where they're on their kneecaps, either in standing on the knee type positions or on all fours. And for a lot of yoga classes and that kind of thing, this can cause a lot of problems for people. So resting on the patellar or kneecap type area can cause a lot of problems. So I wanted to offer a couple of little modifications for you that you may find useful throughout your yoga practice. So I also wanted to encourage you, be a little bit creative with some of your modifications as well. If something's not working for you, find an alternative. Even if that's not something that's expressly um, told by the yoga teacher, be a little bit creative as well and come into something that will work for you. So one of the positions we often find in our yoga class, we often start off with a cat cow or something like this. So instead of coming into this one, one thing you can come into is a seated style position. And from here, you can bring your hands onto your knees and come into a cat cow type position from here. So inhale, looking up and exhale, rounding through. This will give you the same opening through the spine without the pressure on the knees. So that's our cat cow type option. Now the second option for our chaturangas and that kind of thing, or our flow as we often call it. So we'll come high to low plank or high to low plank and then up to a cobra. So the cobra will be okay for your knees because you activate so if you can see my knees here, activate through the thighs and the kneecaps will actually lift off the floor in this position. So if I come around to the side of my mat and my head will come off the screen here, you can see I activate through my thighs and my knees actually lift off the floor coming up into Cobra. And that will prevent a lot of strain on the knees. So I'd encourage you, activate through your thighs as you come into these positions. And from here, put the toes down onto the floor. And then what you can do, push up through the hands, hips stay on the floor here, and then really engage through the belly, lifting all the way up, working a lot of strength through the arms and come back into our high plank, up to our down dog. So with that option, the hips lift off the floor, working strength through the upper body, which is really good. So once again, high to low plank, you can keep the knees off the floor here. High to low plank, work strength, hips come down, knees are not actually touching the floor there. And then little cobra, or all the way up into up dog. Once again, engage through the belly, which is one thing that a lot of people miss through this pose. And my knees are actually lifted off the floor, working strongly through the thighs. And then work strongly through the core, lifting all the way up. Beautiful. So demonstrating again, roll all the way forward, bend the elbows, hips touch down, lift up, lower, and then pushing up and then from here, work strength, lift up and then flip the toes over. Beautiful, so avoiding the pressure on the knees. Beautiful. And another one that often causes problems for people is our pigeon pose. So our pigeon pose, knee to wrist, and then my back knee is actually touching down on the floor here. So if you want to avoid this position because it does cause problems on the kneecap, this does give a great stretch through the glutes, but it can prove problematic for the knees. 
So a brilliant option here is to lie down onto your back. And it is the exact opposite of what they might cue in a class if you're coming into pigeon pose. But don't be afraid of this. Most teachers will know what you're doing. So bring one heel or one ankle over the opposite knee. Hands come up and thread the needle, thread them through, grabbing the back of that opposite, or in this case, my left leg, and pull the leg in. So you'll get the same stretch and benefits through the glute, through this right glute. So even though I'm in basically an upside down version of the pose, it's given me exactly the same benefits. And then I can obviously do the same thing on the other side. Beautiful. So that's a few hints and tips for getting around some of our most common poses. Now, another one that you might often see is our camel pose, lifting up and then coming into the back bend. If that doesn't work for you, I'd encourage you to let the teacher know at the start of class, or if they cue something like a camel pose, your option, hands can reach back. Once again, engage through the thighs, lift the kneecaps off the floor to prevent any pressure, and then lifting up through the chest. And this will give you that same opening and back bend shape. Beautiful, lifting back up. And they're just a few little tips. So work real strength through the body, keep the thighs engaged, and that will take a lot of the pressure off. Coming into up dog, and I haven't actually touched my knees down at all there, lifting all the way back up, but very important to keep the core engaged to protect through the spine. So, I do also offer Zoom sessions as well. So if you'd like a session to run through some modifications suited to your body, I would be happy to help out there as well. If you've got any questions as well, subscribe below. I do post a lot of videos up on my YouTube as well. So I'd be happy to have a chat or I'd love to see you watching some of my videos.